and welcome back to the channel. Today we want to talk about precisely placing a logo on my eight foot charcuterie board. This is a picture of the uh, charcuterie board standing on end and then we rotated it so that I can show you where the actual logo is going to go. The logo is going to go right down here where I'm marking this in the uh, right lower corner near the handle. I need to put it as far down to the bottom as I can as she's requested so that it can show in the front part of the board when she's using the board. She wants her logo to show and uh, I want to not put it over the knot uh, to take any chances with breaking anything loose in the knot just in case there's some weakness in that epoxy. There shouldn't be but I don't want to take a chance and so I'm going to show you how I am going to go about uh, precisely locating that logo so it goes right in the right location based on having this 8 foot board and using my Laguna IQ which is a 36 inch long bed. So to make sure that it goes in the right location I need to be very specific about where it's going to start and where it's going to end and that's what we're going to demonstrate in this video. How to locate it precisely. We'll start this video in the you know, V-Carve Pro program that I originally designed the charcuterie board in. You can see the full board here. If I run the tool pass, you'll see what it looks like. Let's run those real quick. Preview visible tool pass. So you can see the board is down here in the lower right. The leaf and the G getting pretty close to the bottom. As close as I can get without wanting to potentially chip out the side with the V carving. So now what I need to do is, this is where I want to locate it, but to actually get the uh, location correct, I need to isolate this logo so that I know when I line it up on my board exactly where it's going. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this logo and I'm going to isolate it to a smaller location that I have control over. So let's start with creating a new sheet to work with. I'm going to add new. I'm going to copy the logo. Let me uh, make sure it's grouped. And I'm going to copy this logo to another sheet. I'm going to copy it to sheet two. Let me rename that sheet to, uh, to logo only so I don't get them confused. And then I'm going to make that the active sheet. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to open up this logo. And I want to see the size of it. And the size is 18 by 2.77, 18 by 2.781 inches long. So uh, that's where I'm going to actually uh, measure everything from. And to make it easier, I'm going to go ahead and put a rectangle around that. So I'm going to remember, I'm going to copy this right here for my own sake. I hit Control C, close this. I'm going to make a rectangle. And I'm going to make it two point seven seven eight one by eighteen inches. Hit create. And you can see it's located down over here to the size where it created. That's okay. I'm going to move it. And I'm just going to center it. And I'm going to take this logo and I'm going to center it also. So now if I did everything right, it should be in the very center of that rectangle. As you can see, it's bounded by the rectangle. I'm going to hit close. And now what I'm going to do is change the size of the material. So now I'm going to come up here and my X is going to be control V, which is the same size as my rectangle. This is going to be 18 inches. This really doesn't matter. I'm not going to go greater than 0.15 inches deep, so I'm just going to arbitrarily say 0.25 inches. It's not critical. I'm going to go off the material surface, and here's where I'm going to make a change. I'm going to make my XY datum position off the bottom right. And the reason I'm making it off the bottom right, I'll explain in just a second. Hit OK. Hit yes, hit okay, 
And so now I want to take this logo and I'm going to center it in the material. Hit close. And now as you can see, my material size is exactly the same size as my logo. And what I'm going to do when I go to the actual uh, align up on the board is as follows. The first thing I want to do is actually go out and get a picture of the board so I can demonstrate it easier. So I'm going to go out to my drive. I'm going to get this picture right here. I'm going to pull it into my project. I'm going to come over and uh, move it over here for a second. Now I need to crop this photo to make it easier to demonstrate what I'm going to do. To crop, I need to put a vector around it. So I'm going to uh, create a rectangle. that I can use. First I have to select the bitmap. First I have to select the bitmap, hold shift, select the bounding vector, and then hit crop. And now you can see what it did was it cropped my bitmap to that area. So I don't have all the other noise around it. So now that I have this here, let me blow it up so it's easier to see on the video. So my goal now when I'm actually going to locate this carving, recall that I set the XY datum position right up in this corner, right here. So when I locate this on my CNC, I'll put the CNC in a, I'll put this board on my CNC in a location, this is what you're going to see, such that that corner is located right about here. Let's see if I can show this on the video. If not, I'll cut it out. So I'm going to move this over here. Okay, I think this kind of demonstrates it. Um, when I, and this is, this board still needs to be bigger. I just don't want to keep messing with it. The logo will actually come out to about this location right here. But for purposes of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this to my CNC and then I'm going to put the XY datum right here. So that'll be my home position. And then I'll do a frame basically around just to validate. And then my CNC will carve right in this location for the logo. With that in mind, let's go forward to the CNC and start to see how I set it up at the CNC. Well, before we go to the CNC, I guess I should actually save the toolpath. So let me turn off the bitmap to get rid of that noise. We're going to go ahead and go over to the toolpath. When setting up this toolpath, I'm going to do it a little different than I normally do with the V-carve. I'm going to try a, a ball nose this time. I, I've been, it's a 132nd inch tip ball nose uh, since the size of this carving will should support that I want to try that with this carb. Normally I would use a 15 degree or 30 degree V-bit, but we're going to go with uh, the ball nose since I've seen a few people doing inlays with them and I just want to start experimenting. So if you're wondering why am I using a ball nose uh, in a V-carving toolpath, it's because I'm uh, trying to expand and experiment. So the way I want to do this is a V-carving toolpath, but before I do that, I want to set up a profile for around the edge here to validate I have the right frame. And you'll see when I go to the uh, project on the CNC where I use this to make sure I've got this um, properly located because I'll Z right up here in the corner and then I'll watch how it squares up and I'll know whether I've got the right uh, area for the logo or not. I just wanted to barely scratch the surface, so 0.001. I'm going to use the same tapered ball nose that I'm going to use with the V-bit. I'm going to put it on the vector, and uh, that's all I need. And I'll hit Calculate, and that's just my profile. I don't need to change anything around. I'll know what that means on the USB drive. The next bit I want to set up will be the V-car. 
I'm going to go to a depth of 0.125. I'm going to use this ball nose, 462280, and I'm going to use a 1 8 inch uh, clearance tool, end mill. So I've got everything set up here. Nothing more I need to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate that. And now you can see, oops, something didn't go right. Let's go look back here. Oh, selector. I forgot to select the vectors. Hit close. Hit calculate. Continue anyway. We're going to preview visible. Tool pass. And let's change the color of those V-carves to white so we can see them. That looks pretty good. Now we have our tool pass set up to go out uh, to the board and start to uh, check the location and uh, do the V-carving. We'll transfer these to the V-bit and go to the board. I'm actually going to try something new uh, with this V-carving for this epoxy, something that I've seen some others doing on the internet, um, throwing wood with his wood inlays and so forth. And I'm going to experiment a little bit on this board because I can always go back to the V-bit if I don't like the way it looks. And I'm actually going to use a ball nose. I've got a 1 32nd inch ball nose right here. And uh, I'm going to use that to do the V-carving with. and see how that works out. So this will be a little bit new. My first step in all of this process is actually to go set the XY datum on my machine, which remember is up at the top right corner here. And then I will do a what I'll call an air cut real quickly to see where the logo is going to locate to make sure it's going to locate in the right position. So what you're going to see me doing it's coming over to this corner here and setting the XY position. Okay, now I'm setting the Z position right here, which is above the point uh, 125 depth I'm going to go with the epoxy so that I can watch how it's going to trace and to make sure it's in the right location. And now when I do a trial path, I'll be able to see exactly where that logo is going to be going and make sure I've got everything set up correctly. To make sure I have the right boundaries, I put a profile rectangle around the actual carving. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually place this tape in the location I'm expecting this carving to take place based on the XY datum position that I set earlier. And I'm just going to put this tape here as a way to scratch it and locate where this logo is actually going to go. When I carve it, I set the bit at a depth of 0 .001 and so it shouldn't do much more than actually scratch this tape when I run the tool path. And so that's the goal. It may or may not scratch the tape on the first run. I'll be watching. Go to home. So it says my home location is right here. Which is as close as I feel comfortable getting to the end of the board. And so now we'll run the profile and see where it ends. Okay, that tells me where it's going to go. I feel comfortable with that, and so now I can actually carve the uh, carve the actual logo. So now it's time to actually carve the logo. It's 3 a.m. You got me waiting for your love. I'm at the corner of the club. 
It's pouring down, but I won't. No, I won't budge. I'll call your bluff. You think you're tough, yeah. So go ahead, come and put me off. Bring all your friends so they can watch. You're drunk, dialing up my phone. So here I am at 3 a.m. Let's do a quick summary of what we covered in this video. Uh, I wanted to cover how you could use the datum location to your advantage in different situations. I've previously covered how using the center point can make it easy to locate for some repairs. In this case, I wanted to locate this uh, logo that you see right here in a specific part of the charcuterie board, basically up at the top right end of that board or bottom right end depending on how you're looking at the location of the board and that was the goal for this video so let's talk about that do a quick summary real quick normally I'm going to go to the sheets logo only I'm gonna hit edit real quick and normally I would do my datum location down here in the bottom left that's where I design most of the time, or lots of times when I design, I'll design in the center, and then when I go to cut, I'll move to the bottom left. In this case, because of the location of the logo being up at the top right, and I wanted to have very fine control of where that was going, what I did was I used the top right datum position. So that's what you need to be thinking about with your datum position, is not just where you're designing it, but where you want to start your carve, how big your carve is, and where the exact location is. In this case, by using the top right datum position, we were able to locate this carving up in the top right corner of the board, avoiding a knot. In summary, pick your location for your XY datum in a strategic way, depending on what you're trying to carve. And sometimes, something that's out of the normal is the best place to locate your XY datum. I hope this is useful to some in helping you think a little bit different. And if so, please uh, like this by giving it a thumbs up. Share this video with others. Uh, subscribe if you like what you got here so you'll be aware of new content. I cover various things that I think people would be interested in learning about if they don't already. This was an example of using the actual XY, XY datum to your own position and seeing how I located that, uh, how I used that to locate a specific item on a huge board. Have a great day. Until we meet again in this medium, I wish you best.